as we move forward to the second spiral two questions should be always on top of our mind question number one are we ready for tomorrow's operation question number two are we nurturing the connection well with the nation that we serve to defend Friends help each other through difficult times. You've been a true friend to us in our hour of need. They, they are worried. They have their apprehension, they have their fears. But once they see the big picture, why we need to go in there, promote Singapore as a responsible member of the international community, and then they see the reason why. To me, it's a great honor. My first reaction is a great honor for me to serve my nation and my, my unit and my country. For me, I actually volunteered for it. Okay, so when I first heard that uh, I'm being selected, I'm very happy. For maintenance personnel, is we hardly got this chance to go to almost the war front. So this is really a great uh, learning experience for us. They had a big contribution for the Bamiyan people. They contributed with the infrastructure and especially for the health system. We are fully appreciate the support of the Singaporean uh, military. So that's one of the ways that you know you can show them your support. I think it's a good thing. I mean, I think that a lot of um, a lot of other countries don't even know that Singapore is is part of this war, and I think it's, it's showing a lot of support. I think it's really good because uh, it, it brings about convenience. So I can just like uh, after work go down to the fitness corner, use the all five stations to turn up for IPPT. It's very objective focused, like we're not wasting our time on things which are irrelevant. We work with a bunch of very very motivated people, I must say. And I think you can see with the rifle companies, the, from everyone from the private soldier all the way up, that we're here, we want to do a good job. I think they did very well, uh, even though they come from uh, different walks of life, but the spirit of them coming to this battalion for them to do the uh, attack stage 2 is the spirit is there. Brotherhood only exists in the army. Not, not in the uh, civilian life, no.
to see that a group of soldiers come here to live fire on their launchers for the very first time and with the success that they've had, it just demonstrates the absolute professionalism they've had back at home in training and preparing themselves for this. And it's something that, I mean, our soldiers, my senior NCOs have commented on the absolute professionalism of the soldiers from the Singapore Armed Forces. Infantry Battalion, we are foot soldiers. We march here, we march there. This is a very big step for us because it's the first time we are using a vehicle to go enemy ground. Based on the, on the competencies and capability of the barracks, which are simply mobility, sustenance, protection, firepower, and most important, connectivity. I think the uh, can say that it's, it's, it's really within its own uh, genre. I believe after working with the Terex, uh, knowing uh, the capabilities that it can afford me and my soldiers, and uh, rather help SAF be a ready, relevant and decisive force. I feel excited. Can't wait to uh, learn about it. We are very proud. It's a giant step for infantry battalion 2SR. I came from BMT, um, I'm just a basic soldier and uh, I wasn't really specialised in anything yet. Coming to SCS, we will develop further into it because specialists need depth. Right now I think I'm a very confident person because of the training that SCS has actually given me uh, in terms of holding appointments here, you know, they just throw you an appointment and you have to take charge suddenly. I'm going to use my confidence to, and I'm going to impart that into my new privates who are actually going to come into MPTS, Military Police Training School. I'm going to make sure I turn them into you know, proper MPs and continue the generation of better specialists to come. As a master trainer, definitely is also a recognition, which means that the officers actually trust that as a specialist, we know our job very well. So in terms of uh, knowledge, in terms of uh, experience, I can actually at the same time guide not only the men, but the officers as well. My personal point of view, I believe that this new batch of uh, youngsters, they want more responsibilities and they want to study more, they want to learn more. I believe that the EWAR system is actually quite a good system. Using this system, finally, we are getting uh, sponsored for degree courses. In terms of uh, aspiration, I've been hearing that uh, a WASPAC senior warrior will be taking over CEO of a training school. So this is what is not imaginable in the past. On the day he came in as BMT to the T commission, I see a lot of difference in him. The way he walks, the way he talks is entirely different. Not the same boy I used to know before. Now I look at him and say, oh, okay, I'm talking to an officer. No longer just a, a, a son that I have. If I'm still in uniform, I will salute him. And I salute all the officers in the SAF. They've done a good job. And it can be very safe to sleep at night knowing that we are being protected. Somewhere, somehow, someone is looking after us. Yeah,and that we can actually witness and be part of the, uh, like part of their right of passage. Yeah. We feel that we are also involvement, even though women we can't do on NS, but we also have that involvement that. I think that we are in the United States, we can do on NS, but we also have that involvement that. I think that we are
excited and fascinated by today's experience. I think this is our best total defense day. So SAF is not a very visible but it is the strong backbone and the cornerstone really of our economy and really everything that we do we thank the SAF for quietly being behind the scenes. Yeah, it was very educational and entertaining and I learned a lot of things today. Oh. And I wish I was a boy so I could join the army. The SAF rocks!